Now in this lesson we'll be looking at two-way tables. So let's have a look at an example. We're told that the two-way table shows the results of a survey of a group of Year 8 students. So we'll see we've got that table there and it looks at whether students play a musical instrument or not and whether they play a team sport or not. Now we're asked to use the table to find how many students firstly were surveyed. So that's the total number of students here. Well, if we look right down the bottom right hand corner of our table, we can see there were 190 students in total who were surveyed. Now in part B we're asked to find how many students played a musical instrument. Well there's our heading plays a musical instrument. We'll read across the row there and at the end we'll see there were 96 students. Now we're looking for the number of students who did not play a team sport. So once again find the heading does not play a team sport. There it is. This time we read the column underneath that. Now we're just looking for the total again. So there it is, 65 students who didn't play a team sport. Now part D, the number of students who played a musical instrument and a team sport. So the two things we've got to take into account here. So those who played a musical instrument first of all, that's all of these ones across this row. And then those who play a team sport, that's everything underneath that column there. Well we can see the crossover number, so there's 57 students who played the musical instrument and also played a team sport. Now for Part E, the number of students who did not play a musical instrument but played a team sport. So let's use the same technique. There's our does not play a musical instrument, everything across there. And there's our students who play a team sport, everything underneath there. So the column and the row cross over there at our value of 68. So our answer for this one, 68 students who didn't play a musical instrument but played a team sport. Now we're going to find the probability that a student selected at random plays a musical instrument but does not play a team sport. So we're looking for probability here, make sure we don't get confused. The probability they play a musical instrument but not a team sport. Let's see. Plays a musical instrument, all the ones across there. Doesn't play a team sport, everything underneath that heading. So we can see there's 39 students. And that's out of that total of 190 students. So, as a fraction, 39 over 190 is our probability. Now in part two, find the probability that a student plays a team sport. Alright, so this probability here, we firstly need to find the number of students who play a team sport. That's that whole column there. And there's our total, 125 students. Now that's out of our 190 students again, so we'll write that as a fraction. Now that fraction there, 125 over 190, well that one can break down, can't it? Simplifies to give us a probability of 25 over 38. Well, let's have a look at a second example now. We're told here that customers in a cafe were surveyed on their favourite frozen drink. And the results are shown in the Venn diagram below. Now we're asked to represent this information in a two-way table. So let's draw ourselves up a blank table first of all. and We need headings for our columns and rows. So there's only the two flavours there, cola and sour apple. So we'll look at those customers who liked cola in that column and don't like cola in that column. And then those who like sour apple in our row there and those who don't like sour apple underneath that. So let's see this first cell here. That's those who like cola and also like sour apple. So they like both, so that's going to be this crossover section here in our Venn diagram, 34 customers. Now our next box, that's those who don't like cola, but they do like sour apple. So that would be this section of our sour apple circle here, with no crossover into cola. So that's 23 customers. Now this one here, those who like cola but don't like sour apple. Well that would be this one here, 48. Our next box, those who don't like cola and don't like sour apple. So they like neither of the frozen drinks. Where's that going to be? That's right, it's everything outside the circles, isn't it? So that's six customers there. Well, now we need some totals. We'll start off with this one here. So we're going to add our 34 and our 23 together. So that gives us 57. Then underneath that, this box here, we'll add our 48 and our 6 together. So adding across the row, giving us 54. Now down the bottom here, those who like cola will add the 34 and the 48. So that's 82 customers. 
quite a lot who like their cola frozen drinks, isn't there? And then this one here, add the 23 and 6, giving us 29 who don't like their cola. So only one box to go, the grand total here. Well, we can do this two ways. We can add 57 and 54 together. That gives us 111. And we can double check it by adding a cross here, 82 and 29. That also gives us 111. Right, well, let's take that away and move our table up. We'll take this a bit further. Here we're asked how many people were surveyed. Well, just like before, the grand total down the bottom there, 111 people. And in part C, how many people liked both the sour apple and cola flavours? Well, there's the people who liked sour apple. There's those who liked cola. So here's our number here, 34 people who liked both. And this one, if a customer was chosen at random, what is the probability that they liked neither flavoured frozen drink? Let's see the probability they like neither. There's those who don't like sour apple, and there's the column for those who don't like cola. So they're going to cross over here at our value of 6. But that's out of our grand total of 111, giving us our probability then 6 over 111. Excellent work there. That's our lesson on two-way tables finished. All the best as you work your way through the exercise now.